So we told Sam that we'll pay cash for any winning Michigan lottery tickets, no less than 5K, or this massive network of liquor stores, gas stations, and mini marts across the state. We could count on winners every week. He sells the tickets as usual. When the winner comes back to claim their prize, they're told they have two options. They can drive to the lottery headquarters all the way in Lansing and cash in their tickets, or two, they can wait 20 to 30 minutes and someone will come over, buy their ticket in cash, plus a 10% bonus. Everyone obviously picks the second option. What up, though, BMF fans? Lamont Tyson, Season 3, Episode 8, entitled Code Red. That Code Red was talking about them damn red dogs, and they putting the heat on everybody in Atlanta, getting ready for the Olympics. We'll discuss the ramifications of what's going on with the red dogs. We'll also discuss Charles about to be in the money, and here come Lucille coming back for the honey. We'll discuss that. I felt bad for St. Louis Henry this episode. Did you? We'll discuss that. And Terry, all in the same damn scene, had probably one of the smartest plans I've ever seen on BMF and made one of the dumbest moves all at the same time. We'll discuss that and how good this episode was. Written by Shaquayla Mims and directed by Crystal Robinson. We'll break it all down. This video starts right now. A month early for the dealers come out. Everybody is outside till the killers come out. You ain't eating, you just act full. I'm impactful. Dozen funerals in a month. I got that whole. I will give it to niggas in all rap forms. Ignatius out right now on all platforms. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. What is going on? You in the building with the all knowing, all loving, all feeling, all seeing, all powerful. Damn all everything. Sexy as hell host. That's me, Lamont Tyson. Please be sure to download that podcast. Listen to us. And folks, you got to go join me on TikTok. If you want the best deals on the internet because they got TikTok shop, all you got to do is click on the link that says showcase. You can go in there and get a motorized scooter that goes 20 miles an hour for like under $300. They got Air Jordans. For all my people that like football, they've got jewelry for you. I would have showed y'all the Cowboys, but y'all know I hate them, so I put the Steelers up there. They got an air pump for your car. I don't care how big the car is. It's, you just plug it up, and it charges, and it'll get the car up. They got batteries. They got WWE watches. Go check out my showcase, ladies and gentlemen. Let's jump on into this thing. BMF, they always start out with these good quotes. At the end of the day, this is from Southwest T. It was always about business and nothing personal. I counted the wins and the losses. And he certainly had a bunch of that this episode. And we start out with Meech in the club back in the A with the crew discussing what their next moves is going to be. And I thought it was rather weird to see Glock of the MKs in here with Angel while Meech is in here because they beefing with each other. They want each other dead. And Meech looks over and sees Angel with Glock and one of the other honey dips in the club said, Meech, let me take your mind off her. And I'm thinking, chick, you a Johnny come lately. Ain't nothing you can do to take your mind off Angel because they had, a, they had more than just the physical. So you know what she did? She took Meech to the Boom Boom Room, gave him some of that good head, comes up off her knees and say, ah, uh, did I make you forget her? And Meech's like, nah, baby. Gets up and leaves her cold and dry. Damn. Damn. I know some of y'all saying that's what you get. Then we get on the T. He's got an interesting plot he wants to do that's going to involve the Chaldeans. Now, if y'all don't know about Detroit, one thing about Detroit, they have this place called Deerwood, Dearborn, and it has the largest conglomerate of Middle Eastern people in America. So a whole lot of Middle Eastern people in America live in Dearborn, Michigan, which is right near Detroit. And he's going after the Chaldeans who are, are, look to be Middle Eastern. And he's telling his man, look, we got a plan. We're going to continue to starve that damn St. Louis looking Henry. And she ain't going to have no choice but to bow down and get out the game. And while he's spitting game, look who comes in here looking sweet as hell. Oh, officer phone number. And yes, Lord, he was talking about Terry can't afford that old cougar. And I'm assuming he know Terry is doing drugs because at the end he was like, bruh, do I need to get the FBI to come in here? And I'm looking at this dude like, bruh, you looking, bruh, look how he eating that candy, y'all. Looking sweet as fuck eating that candy. 
And T's looking at him like, dude, I'm going to write you your damn rights. And in the end, that's what he did. And we'll get back to that in a minute. We see the Red Dogs hemming up people, hemming up some of Meech folks right behind Meech as he's getting ready to go. And that got Meech thinking, man, yo, homie, we're going to have to do something about these damn Red Dogs. They're attacking everybody. We're going to have to make some moves. And so Meech dropping the plan and saying, look, I'm going to make some moves. We got to figure out a way to move this weight and avoid these Red Dogs and allow us to do everything while the Red Dogs is handling the MKs and that hard-headed ass Remy. Then we get a sister soldier prayer meeting because the new associate pastor is Lucille and she got Nikki and Lawanda in here. And this lady was in here preaching a sermon about how she had a baby out of wedlock and how it went left and how people was embarrassed and looking at her crazy. And it turned out that that was the silver lining was the baby. It got so good and the Holy Ghost fell up in this bitch. Y'all see that that sunshine behind Lawanda? That got into her. And next thing I know, she about to become an associate pastor. She was crying, singing the praises. And folks, the thing I want to know is... <clears throat> Is this going to give her the courage and strength to kick Terry to the curb? Because the situation, how I see it, the only reason Terry keep coming back to her is because she allowing it. This might be that pivot moment that lets her kick Terry to the curb. And shortly after this prayer meeting, Charles comes through and lets Lucille know that the, the church has got something for him. He's going to be able to play at like the church rock band. And then this chick going to ruin the moment and say, I might have to bring Reese. Come on, chick. Really? I didn't like that. That wasn't right. You ain't had to joke like that. Even if it was a joke, that's not a moment to be joking because you know this man been working his whole life to get to something like that, and he's really doing it for you. So post your comments, y'all. Let me know what you think. Meech has to meet up with Remy. Brother to just say, hey, look, man, you going to undercut Remy? Let's make this thing happen. He tells him, look, man, um, I I'm going to do it. I'm down. And Meech tells him, meet me at the Platinum Palace with your crew, and let's make this deal solidified. Folks, I knew he wasn't going to never make it. I knew it. It was like it was too good to be true. I knew it wasn't going to come. Then we get the coach cop, y'all. Can we? Are we at the point now where we can have pity on coach cop's soul? Are we at the point where we can have pity on his soul? Because he's in here drinking, getting faded. He's in a bad way, and it's all because of what happened to his son. He's not feeling it, man. Like, he's going through these stages of grief, then there's going to be anger, and maybe then he'll decide to do something that's worthwhile because right now everything he's doing is not going to help him. It's not going to bring his son back, nor is it going to help him get over it. Jen comes over there dropping some more knowledge saying, look, get your ass off the floor and let's make moves to really take down and do something to help the situation. Help me with Kobe, help you with your son. Here are Coach Cop and Jen going to fact find the mission. Coach Cop is in full revenge mode at this point. And he's back there one of the spots how he snuck up in Henry Joint, casing the place, trying to see what's going to happen. And you know they didn't put this in here for nothing. You knew that it was going to turn into... <laughs> Who are you talking to? Hell, I'm working. Who are you talking to them? I'm, I'm making a video. Can I do it too? Say something. Hey, hey guys, welcome. We're at the house. Don't worry, worry. We was at the snow cone place. We just came back from the scam in the snow cone. Mm -hmm. and, and next, we appreciate y'all. We, we just came back home. Mm -hmm. We are in the bed. Mm -hmm. We are in grandma room. Right. For the rest of the day, and two is bedtime. It's already bedtime. Mm -hmm. Almost. All right, El, go back in the living room so I can finish. I'll be back. El, go in the living room so I can finish. I thought you was watching TV. Then we got T meeting back up with one of his homies from the limousine business. And they talking about doing a damn Ponzi scheme with the lottery ticket so he can wash his money. And he needs his homeboy to help him get to meet up with the cow Deans. I got a feeling this dude gonna die. I don't wanna see this dude die because I seen he seemed like he's a legit dude, but like he said, he really don't have too many connections to the 
the bad side of the business. And now Terry done drug his butt up in here. When the feds hit, he's going down with the Caldeans. But for now, Terry done made a good plan. Meech is up in the, in the chop shop in the A. And my man is telling them that the police never check the passenger side. That's how they can hide their drugs. Meech being the smart cat that he is said, look, okay, we're going to test this shit out, all right? We're going to test it. And we all know it's a good thing that he did that. But my man's plan didn't work out, and we'll get there in a minute. And I was hoping it would, but I kind of knew it was going to go back to Miami. Then we get <laughs> baby Nikki in here with her boy toy who's trying to play coy. And they supposed to be studying. And the only thing they studying is how much alcohol you can get into these wine coolers. They go into the store, get some condoms, and homeboy's like, I'm trying to take it slow. Only to be intercepted by Terry. I think Terry, now, I think Terry overreacted a little bit. He ain't had to take their keys and throw it. I think Nikki would have came with him anyway. But my man tried to intimidate Nikki, took the keys and threw it. Like, damn, Terry. Like, yeah, I would have been mad too. I would have like, Nikki, get up out of there. But still, you know, after what this girl been through, you got to have a little bit more, e a little bit more emotion with her. Because she's teetering. She didn't have to deal with you and your brother, the mama, and now you trying to do intimidation tactics with the girl. Yeah, I agree. Get her up out of the situation, 100%. But not the way you did it. And now, you know, I don't know what's going to become of Nikki's mental state. All you did possibly is push her closer to old preacher boy. This right here had me flux, y'all. Remy brother in here making deals with the homies, right? They're going to get with Meech because Remy, Remy is losing, he's losing his grip, man. And he's done got the fellas convinced when all of a sudden Remy come in there, cut the man damn tongue out. Got to be more careful. Threw it on the table and then stuck the knife in his neck. Remy's a hard-headed dude, y'all. He never gonna learn. Everything his brother was saying is true. The MK's taking over Techwood. He's losing product. You under pressure from the Red Dogs. And then in the next scene, we get the Red Dogs. And this one little black doorstop hypocrite got the nerve to call old buddy out, right? Talking junk to him about, you giving black folks a bad name. When we click, quickly learned that this dude got his own set of problems, they find what they thought was drugs, and Officer Oriental over here was looking at it like, hey, yo, this ain't no drugs. Then they find out that it's nothing but baking soda. Now that shit was good to me. Loved every minute of it. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> Officer Black Hypocrite Uncle Tom punched my man in the gut. I want him to get something coming to him, y'all. Please write in this story something bad for him. And then we get a scene where I actually felt bad for Henry because she's losing all kinds of situations, right? She's in a situation where she owed the Caldeans money. She don't know where she's going to get it. And then in walks her uncle, which is her daddy's brother. And we probably need a backstory on why the brother don't care for the daddy I think it's probably got something to do with the mom and he feels bad for Henry. But he came in and solved all her money issues, dropped the money on her. Then Henry Mann said, look, F your daddy. Me and Twan was down with you. I'm going to go handle this business. <sighs> what we going to do with St. Louis, Henry? Because at the events that happened at the end of this episode, she done lost Twan. She done lost this dude. She is going to be off the chain. Then we get the scene where Terry is cutting his daddy's hair. And I actually love these scenes with these two because these bonding scenes with them are actually really, really good. He's giving my man advice, letting him know that money don't buy love and it doesn't, but it can make it feel better. And he gave my man a couple of stacks. The dad took them so that he can take mama out for a good time. I appreciate that. And you can see dad is getting closer and closer to getting in this business. Because at first dad detested these dudes. Now he's not only signing over houses, he's taking, how much money y'all think this was? $1,000 back in 1991? 
He showed sure up, took the money. Then T get a call from Meech. Meech is talking about, you know, we got to get that work down in Miami, meaning that we got to figure out a way to get to Miami and get these cars fixed up so we can move this product. And we saw what's going to happen later. Then we get back to these punk ass red dogs and this particular Uncle Tom cop right here punching folks. And then Officer Oriental, he ain't no better, pretending like he found marijuana from behind the shower, got my man all naked, only to pull out marijuana out of his pocket and is going to frame these dudes. Then the family is up here pleading with this girl who started to feel a little bad based on the story that the family told him. Where was y'all at when my child died? There was nowhere to be found because that ain't their mission. Like a lot of times police and governments try to make it seem like they about health and safety. They about the money. That's what they about. And as that is going on in Techwood, you got Glock out here with Angel basically telling somebody, look, we got to get the hell up out of here and go to Miami. And Angel is listening to the whole story. Glock put his right hand man to go get Meech. And then we get to the scene where Terry seemed like he had one of the smartest plays ever on BML, but also one of the most stupid plays too. And let me give y'all another clip of what he was saying. I break off Sam from pulling a winning ticket, then we find someone we can trust, like Hoop's cousin, to claim the winning ticket in her name. The lottery withhold taxes and give her a check, she deposits it and uses the now clean money to buy jewelry, cars, houses, whatever I want, and we take care of her for doing that. And we don't have to worry about the IRS, because the IRS is going to keep the record of all... So, yeah. He came up with a scheme to watch that money, y'all, through the lottery and all these stores, but I felt like it was kind of dumb for him to tell Markeisha the whole story. Like, bro, let it play out a little bit before you get her the whole scheme. If this is the same woman that was willing to play on your vulnerability of being jealous with some officer phone number, how can you trust her that well? And speaking of officer phone number, his ass pops up again trying to get in between T and Markeisha, the cougar draws. And I like how T had to check his ass. Bruh, I know what time you get up and floss your teeth. I know what time you take your early morning dump. I know what time you drink your skinny cow coffee. Hell, I know what time you go home and skinny dip. Don't play with me. But the question I have for you guys is, is this the end of him? I don't think they would bring in officer phone number and just cut him loose that easily. He is going to be a thorn in Terry's side that I think Terry's going to eventually have to get Blaze to handle. And hell, for all we know, Officer Phone Number could team up with Jen and Coach Cop. Post your comments. Charles is playing music. He's a music man. And oftentimes, people like him who have tried and tried, they need an opportunity, y'all. We all need opportunities. Don't let these rich folks, these entertainers, I always try to tell you everything is about hard work. Yes, you do need to put in some hard work, but at some point in time, you need an opportunity, and when that opportunity comes, you got to be prepared for it. Well, Charles got his opportunity right here at this thing. Homeboy hooked him up with the manager, and did y'all see Lucille panty draws getting wet? Super soaker. I know some of y'all fellas want to start talking about, you know, she's all about the money and all that. Well, you can't say that because she's been with Charles so long while he ain't have nothing. This did my heart fine to see her wanting to plan with him to do something special. And I hope this is going to be them doing something different with the fake story versus the real life story, trying to put them together. Let them get back together, y'all. Let them go have a good time. But you know we ain't seen the end of Maurice. Post your comments. How is Maurice going to behave now? Then we get Jen having a little date with Henry and we get backstory, okay? We learned that Henry has got daddy issues, which I don't even think that's a backstory, but we learn more about her mom. Her mom died giving birth. And then this always kind of makes Jen get emotional about the situation with her family. The point of infliction came when the cops came in that would have known Jen and she had to lay a kiss on Henry. Some of y'all last week thought that Henry knew what was going on and I knew she didn't because she was too flirty. And now that Jen put this kiss on her, how do I say this? Shim both parts. 
called a wood and caught wet all at the same damn time. Post your comments. We back at Club Platinum. Somebody sends something over to the table to meet. He's supposed to be having his meeting. And guess who it is? Remy's brother. And Remy and Meech have a face-off. Now, Remy looked tough, right? But here's the problem with him looking tough. His brain is tough as $2 leather, too. Bruh, Meech just read you what's going on, and you still out here trying to be hard? Nigga, take the punk out. Pair up with this man and make this money. Stop trying to be tough. You ain't got nothing going on. MK's running your neighborhood. Red Dog's running your neighborhood. Meat's trying to go all around the world to make this money, and Remy don't want to do it. Sooner or later, Booker T, little brother, is going to have to listen or he's going to bow down and be out. Terry got his meeting with the Chaldeans, and they all enjoyed it. Only problem I had was why y'all ain't eating the soul food? Hell, y'all ain't in the Middle East no more. Eat some of that soul food. Now, when Big Man shook Terry's hand when they talked about how to get rid of Henry, I ain't going to lie, y'all, I don't trust him. It was something about that handshake and the way he got up that just tells me don't trust him yet. And then when you got a table full of these dudes, unless the money is really rolling in the way Terry is saying it, it's hard to trust all of them. Post your comments if you think somebody's going to break out this Chaldean Middle Eastern connection. Angel meets up with Meech, knowing that she still care for him, saying that she's only with Glock because what I said when she left Meech. Basically, she's kind of got a little form of Stockholm Syndrome. She don't know how to stand on her own two feet. And now she's about to leave Atlanta and go down to Miami, but she warned Meech somebody's coming for him. I bet she thought <coughs> Meech was going to say, Oh, sugar honey iced tea, baby, you can come back. But Meech done some Meech, <laughs> you ruined that loyalty, you ain't getting nowhere with him. But you can tell he cared because he still gave her a hug. And she's going to always remember this dude. And it could be a situation when they get down to Miami, he might somehow, some way save her. Or she might save him. Hen and Jen, how y'all like that name? Sound like some kind of $2 alcohol you get out of the bodega. Jen and Hen is making out. And then something spooked Jen. She saw this picture. And at first, before I decided to blow it up, I couldn't tell if this was Detective Kobe or what. Because the way Jen looked at him, I was like, what in the hell? Why, why would you just stop? Or did she have a premonition that she can't go that far right now? So I blew it up for y'all, took some time. It's not Kobe, I don't think. That looks like young Henry Twan and her man cousin that's on the show right now this episode and when you compare it to Kobe it's tough it looked like it could be Kobe I don't think it's Kobe but if it is Kobe y'all post your comments and I think I might even take back what I'm saying that is Kobe it don't look like young Henry that could be Kobe so y'all let me know what y'all think and we'll get back to it next week that's why I got y'all here to help me out Glock right hand man Bust up in the hotel where Meech was getting it in with these two women who propositioned him. And <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> Meech, I'm, let me tell you something. People on TV have bad shooting, don't they? I don't know how Meech avoided that gunshot, but he did. Meech avoided the gunshot. Dude shot the bitch in the titty. And she's down. At least we know them breasts is real. Because it won't no plastic oozing out of there. Imagine what would happen if he would have shot Cougar Draws Markeisha. And Meech beat the hell out of this dude, didn't even have to shoot him because he threw him out the window using the damn um, rock bottom WWE move. Dude head splattered all over the place. Meech get back, tell his crew what happened. How did they find out where he was at? But, you know, it's time to go to Miami and get these cars hooked up, get this money. He called up Terry and let him know. Then we get to the climax to end. Coach Cop going through his stages of grief drinking, sitting here looking like David Allen Greer with a bald head, drinking, sees Henry's last right-hand man, her cousin, see him walk out, approach this dude, y'all, approach him, hardcore approach him. Now, we know Coach Cop ain't nothing to be played with. He can fight now. I mean, he, he might look like he's a milk dud, but hey, this is a milk dud that's got a little ninja in him, grabs the cousin, 
beat his ass to death. Now, Henry is without all her close people. Henry is about to go buck wild, y'all. Believe me, y'all thought that blowtorch was something. She done lost both of her good cousins. She's at odds with her daddy. Her drug flow is, is drying up. <clears throat> what you think gonna happen when she find out Jen a cop? I'm still on the mindset Jen is gonna die, but I wanna hear from you all. So please post me your comments. Let me know what you think. Thank you as always for coming and checking out my videos. I try to get these up here the minute BMF goes off. Don't forget to like the video, comment, subscribe, download the podcast. Be sure to go check me out on TikTok. Click that TikTok showcase button. Anything you want, you can get in TikTok shop two thirds cheaper than Amazon. I'm talking, they got protein shakes, WWE replica belts, 20 mile an hour scooters, Air Jordans, um, drones that have 4K cameras in them, 4K cameras, headphones, anything you can think of, you can get at TikTok shop. Save yourself a lot of money. Till that next sex is hell video, which will be my breakdown for episode nine. I'll see you.